All right, so you can use pH indicators to help you rank the strengths of acids. Okay, so um, you see again, we have our generic formula for um, acid indicator. And um, in this case, we are talking about um, bromophile blue, and which is a very common indicator. It's yellow when it's in acids, and it's blue when it's in bases. And the pH range with which it transitions is 6.2 to 7.6. All right, so when you add a strong acid, um, the solution turns yellow. So looking up here, um, at our formula, can we decide um, which form of the indicator, the HIN or the IN minus, is the um, predominant form after the strong acid is added? Okay, so when you add a strong acid, essentially what it's going to do is going to produce a bunch of H pluses in solution, right? So what that does is it causes the equilibrium to shift this way. So this is going to be our predominant form in solution at this point. All right, um, here again is a formula for our acid. Um, if you'll notice, this one is a little different, it's sort of in reverse. So the acid is reacting um, with the indicator and it is making the indicator and some of the conjugate base of that weak acid. Okay, so we can conclude that if the protonated form or the HIN, the one that's got the proton on it or the um, hydrogen, if that is what we're observing, so if we're observing this, what that tells us is that this HA acid is actually stronger than our indicator because the HA is the one that's actually being dissociated and the other one, um, the indicator, is actually being taken out of solution because it is reacting with the H+. Plus. All right, so continuing on that theme, we are going to look at, um, we have two indicators, indicator one and indi indicator two, and we're gonna try to use them to help us determine the relative strength of three acids. Please notice that I have changed their um, numbers because there were some inconsistencies with the questions and my chart. So I just changed them to acids three, four, and five. Acids one and two are actually our indicators, right? So there's our two indicators and then acid three, four, five. All right, so the first question is asking about acid three. So it wants to know if acid three is stronger or weaker than the first indicator and then the second indicator. All right, so acid three is giving us um, colorless, which indicates acid, okay? So what that's telling us is that acid three is actually a stronger acid because it's producing the protonated form. So Acid three is stronger than indicator one. Okay, now let's look at indicator two. All right, indicator two is yellow, still giving us the acid form. So it's also stronger than indicator two. Okay, now we're gonna look at acid four. Okay, so acid four is colorless, so it is stronger than indicator one. All right, and then indicator two, though, it's giving us the base form, which what that tells us is that our indicator is actually weaker than our, um, our base, or uh, the indicator's weaker than acid four, okay? And then acid five um, gives us pink, so it's weaker than indicator one, but it is, let's see, and then it gives us blue, which is the basic, so it's also weaker than indicator two. Okay, now of course, the last question wants us to basically bring this all together. So um, 
I'm going to, so we want to rank the all of the acids. Oh, snap. My pen's not there. Okay. We want to rank all of the acids from strongest to weakest. So we're going to put strongest over here. And we're going to put weakest over here. Okay. So hopefully you realize that um, acid 5 is super weak, right? Because it was weaker than both indicators. So definitely the weakest. And acid 3 is definitely the strongest because it was stronger than both indicators. Acid 4 was kind of in the middle. It was, it was um, stronger than indicator 1, but weaker than indicator 2. Okay, so that leaves us with our indicators. So we know that indicator 1... Um, three and four were stronger than indicator one. So definitely indicator one goes over here. Um, and we saw that indicator one was stronger though than acid five. Now indicator two, indicator two is stronger than um, acids four and five, but weaker than three. So that puts indicator two right there. Okay, so let's look at a different situation. Um, in this one, we know that when a base is added to indicator one, the solution is gonna turn red. So for us to write the reaction between the base and indicator one, so our base is our OH minus, and then our indicator looks like so, and we know that what's gonna happen is that we're going to make some HOH and some IN minus. All right, so definitely more of the deprotonated form is present because the OH minus is neutralizing all of your um, indicator, your weak indicator acid, and producing that conjugate base. So definitely that one is going to be more prevalent when you are in the... Um, the red region, right? Okay, and the student um, believes that the pKa of indicator one is about four, and is this a reasonable guess or not? Okay, so let's talk about pKa. So we know that pKa tells us when the indicator is going to shift colors at um, pKa, the concentration of the protonated indicator is equivalent to the deprotonated indicator. Okay, so this is what we know. We know that um, when it is acidic, um, it is blue. Okay, and when it is basic, it is red. Okay, so red and blue make purple. So our, P, our pKa definitely lies in the middle of that region. The middle of that region is, in fact, four. So yes, I think that is a very reasonable guess that the pKa of our first indicator is four. All right, next one wants us to talk about which indicator is stronger, the first one or the second one. Okay, so I'm just going to completely look at... Um, we look at the pKa region, okay? So here is where we have equivalent amounts. So it looks like our, our pKa is about 6.8. What that tells us is that indicator one is definitely the stronger acid because it has a lower pKa value, which means it dissociates more, higher Ka. All right, so we can definitely use Henderson-Hasselbalch to help us reason um, about what's going on with indicators. So what would be true of the relative, uh, relative concentration of the protonated and deprotonated form of bromothymol blue when a green color is observed? Okay, so green, um, as you know, is the mixture of yellow and blue. So what that tells us is when we have a green color, we are definitely in that buffer region of the indicator, and we know that our protonated 
um, or H-I-N, is equivalent to our I-N minus. Okay, so definitely we are um, basically at half equivalence at that point. All right, plus or minus that region. So in the buffer region, so like plus or minus one pH unit there. Okay, now we're going to look at methyl orange. Um, so gives us the structures for both of them and ask us which color of the methyl orange is going to be the uh, acidic form. So definitely going to have to be this one. This one's got the hydrogen that can be given off. This one has lost the hydrogen, okay? So this... Uh, bottom one, the red one, is going to be the acidic form. So that's going to be our HIN. If we added acid to that red form, all it's going to do is get more red. So it's just going to get more red than it already is. Um, if we added base to it, however, the base is going to react with um, that hydrogen, it's gonna pull that hydrogen off. It's gonna give us that deprotonated form. So it's going to get uh, more yellow. Okay, now continuing on, same indicators. Um, at a pH of 3.7, we have equal concentrations of yellow and red. So it wants to know what that means in terms of the pKa for methyl orange. Well, obviously, if we have equal concentrations of the um, basic and acidic form of it, then the pH is equal to the pKa at this point. So the pKa has got to be 3.7. Um, so methyl orange could act as an effective buffer plus uh, 3.7, which is its pA, uh, pKa, uh, plus or minus one pH unit. So basically from 2.7 to 4.7, that's about the biggest range you're gonna get out of a buffer for methyl orange. So going back over here, okay? So when you have one pH unit, that is when you have 10 times more of one thing than the other. That's exactly what our, our log base tens mean is that we have um, 10 times more. All right, so um, when we have one form of the indicator, either protonated or deprotonated, um, that is 10 times greater than the other, we can observe the color change of the dominant C species. So we're only going to see the color of the dominant species after we get 10 times greater of one than the other. So the pH range for the indicator is the region that both colors are observed. So for methyl orange, we're only going to see a pH of yellow if it is around. So below 2.7 um, is when we're going to see the red. So 0 to 2.7 is going to be the red indicator. And then the yellow we're going to see from 4.7 all the way up to 14. So if we had a 0 0.01 molar solution of HCl, HCl is a strong acid, so that means all of the H plus is equivalent to the concentration of the acid. And if you negative logged that, you would get that the pH is around 2. So at a pH of around 2, um, we're only going to have the, um, my bad, not the yellow, the red form of the indicator because the red form is the acidic form.